Wine and Crime contains graphic and explicit content that may not be suitable for some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Listening to Wine and Crime, the podcast where three friends chug wine, chat true crime, and unleash their worst Minnesotan accents. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very matter of factly. And a variety of other accents. <laughs> and a variety of other atrocious Minnesotan tinged accents. Hey, we are um, an equal opportunity <laughs> destroyer of other accents and languages. <laughs> Only one of our accents is authentic, though. Yeah. Um, I'm Kenyon. I'm Lucy. I'm Amanda. And this week we have a special fan pick episode. Woo! Mm-hmm. Um, Our so favorite again, kind. if you donate on patreon.com, uh, to our show at $25 a month or more, then you have the opportunity to choose an episode topic and or case and or wine uh-huh. and or all three and or all three. Um, and our amazing fan, Cassandra Netherton. Yes. Oh, your, your nether regions. You make my um, nethers tingle, Cassandra Netherton. Could be Cassandra. <laughs> not sure. Jeez. It also could be Cassandra. Cass. Miss Mama Cass. Netherton. <laughs> um, you have uh, selected a really interesting topic this week. Um, it is faked abductions. Mm-hmm. Mm. This was a fun one. This was a really fun one because the cases are crazy. The people yep. involved are like, yeah, yeah, it was, it's <laughs> yeah. great. <laughs> And we will delve into some of the psychology behind those yahoos. We sure will. But first, I can't wait. Yeah, first, should we plug butt some plugs. butts? Yes, let's plug, plug them up. Some butts up. Take it away. Uh, uh, well, first things first is that this episode is going to be released the day before CrimeCon begins. Woo! Oh my God! As this Woo! is coming out, we are all root to yeah. Nashty Nashville. Oh yeah, I am It'll probably be on like... a plane in a middle seat. Between two <laughs> gassy 50-year-old white men. On Spirit Airlines. <laughs> I'm not flying Spirit. Oh, good. Oh, thank God. So, we will but be I'm flying driving. Like Delta, yeah. which is not much better. We'll be flying yeah. Honda Pilot Air. Nice. <laughs> God, I wish. Um, not the most yeah. efficient, but a lot more comfortable than my method of transportation. There's a TV I- in the back. <laughs> It's you ridiculous. So We're going to have Drop Dead Gorgeous on a loop the yes. whole way there. And <laughs> well, so bro. I will be frantically posting Thursday's morning episode, like, as we're driving from, like, <laughs> making my cell phone into a hot spot and crying. But it'll be Got perfect. It. Love it. Um, so uh, if this episode was delayed, maybe be nice yeah. to us about yeah. it. <laughs> okay. Please also, our next... Us. Butt plug. Once yeah. we actually get to Nashville, Amanda, what are we doing? We're doing a little meetup at the Valentine in Nashville on May 5th. That is the Saturday evening of Crime Con. We're going to meet up around 8.30 p.m. And yeah, it's not like a private event thing. It's just come one, come all, hang out. It's going to be some other free. fun podcasters. Huh? Free? Yeah, it's free. Yeah. I mean, you have to pay for your drinks. but Yeah, yeah. And I actually really don't know if this bar does a cover, but anything I looked for did not show that it did. So it should be fine. We will not be making any money. Yeah, yeah. no. This is not a money-making uh, event. This is just for us to hang out with you, get some cocktails, show off our dirndls. Oh is that my the right God. way to say yes, it? Yes, I'm so excited. Dirndls. Um, and basically what our plan is is to meet up there around 8.30. Their rooftop opens at 9, and we're just going to, like, bum rush to the roof and hang out and be in the warm mm-hmm. sunshine because we very well could still have snow in Minnesota the first weekend in May. So, like, the three of mm-hmm. us are going to be craving some freaking evening Vitamin glow. Vitamin D. Warmth. Yeah. yeah. Probably uh, so, yeah. be down by then, but, you know. Yeah. 
One can hope. Setting. Um, also, uh, and that's why we drink, is going to be having their meetup at the same time directly across the street. Rival um, meetups. No, no, not at all. Not at I know, all. I'm just kidding. So I'm hopefully kidding. everybody can, um, you know, pop into both because it's super convenient. It's just right across the street. It's and like a... I'm hoping that we'll be able to stop in and say hi at theirs and they'll be able to stop in and say hi at ours. It's like a mini so. crime podcast pub crawl with only two easy Bars. destinations yeah. Yeah. so we could not make this easier for you it's all you need really yep. mm-hmm. all right and lucy, lucy. Got one more thing happening at crime con yeah this is uh not confirmed though <laughs> no it is it is it is oh well the lie yes okay part of it is confirmed um, at CrimeCon, we will be doing a live show uh, in the afternoon sometime that de- that Saturday, uh, the May 5th. 5th. Yep. And as far as we know, it is not too late to get tickets to CrimeCon, but... To that, attend this. Yeah. To attend CrimeCon. You need to be mm-hmm. in attendance at CrimeCon in order to come see our live show. It'll mm-hmm. be kind of a mini episode. We've got an hour with a live audience and some... Really cool, far more professional equipment than what we usually work with. So mm-hmm. yep. we've got that in the works for you guys. If you're going to be at CrimeCon, definitely check out their website and their schedule and see when we're going to be doing our live show. Come see yeah, us it's gonna and be amazing. say hi. Yeah. So pumped. And use, use the promo code WINECRIME when yes. you buy your tickets. Yep. Mm-hmm. If, Get a little discount. Okay. It is not too late to buy tickets at this point. It's not. <laughs> All right. Okay, so that's all of our butt plugs. Amanda, cool. what is our wine crime pairing for faked abductions? Mm, I reached far and wide for this <laughs> for this pairing. Um, not a wink wine, just to okay. give everybody a heads up. But uh, just to mention that we are partnered with Wink. They are amazing. It's an online uh, wine club that you can be part of. They can help you narrow down some... Uh, wines that maybe you haven't tried uh figure out kind of what you like and if you are interested in checking out wink and subscribing with their service you can go to trywink.com forward slash gals to get 20 bucks off your first box so just go check out the website trywinc.com forward slash gals Mm -hmm. but this vino is a total wine bloomington creation yeah Mm -hmm. special hi matt hi matt (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, I wanted to pick a white wine since we haven't featured one in forever. And yes. I also like all of us in Minnesota are just super strongly willing spring to finally be just here. Forcing it. Yes. Yeah. And at the time this is recorded, it's still like we're under several feet of snow and the sun is out and it's melting, but it's still cold out. So you're I was like, like, I need something. You're, you're all like developing hemorrhoids. Yes. Based on how hard you're trying to Clenching. bring spring into here. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. Um so I want I want a will spring. I want to drink something nice and light and just like crisp and cool that reminds me of springtime. And I wanted to keep it on brand for the episode topic. So there was also an added bonus with the name mm. of this winery, which is a huge reason why I picked it. So here we go. Today we're drinking the Otis Kenyon <gasps> Rousson. Oh my Literally god! Literally K E N Y O N, Kenyon. Oh my Are god! Are you gonna kidnap me? No, yeah. but I want. I really, oh. I wanted to go with a Rousson because it sounds like ruse, which is like a deception, like a uh, fake goddamn abduction. Okay. So I was okay. perusing the inventory of Rousson, and then I found this bottle, and I was like, "Holy shit!" Well, this is obviously the one because it's just got your oh name on god. it. Oh my god! I didn't know there was any wine with my name on it. That's exciting. Mm-hmm. So I'll save the bottle for you for Thanks. all of the fake lamps you're gonna Pendant make in your house for all yep. my DIYs. <laughs> exactly. Yep. So this little beauté is from Columbia Valley, Washington. Fun fact: Washington wine country has only been producing premium wines for about fifty years, which is zero time whatsoever compared to like. Like the world's winemaking regions. Mm-hmm. But in that short time, Washington has become the United States' second largest wine producer just behind California. And some really amazing wines come out of uh, Washington. I would especially keep an eye out for like Willamette Valley Pinots because they're just so, it's like unmatched. They're so beautifully done. Um, cool. From this particular bottle, you're going to get flavors of lemon and pineapple, summertime, mm. woven together in <laughs> Roussin's distinctively creamy texture, oh. full, rich mouthfeel with a crisp finish. It's super balanced. It's a standout wine for having a bunch of character and depth, but like 
maintaining some very refreshing uh, kind of clean finish. So it's not going to blast out your palate, but if you really take your time with this wine and hold it in your mouth for a little bit, that's what she said, uh, you can pick up a bunch of flavor notes. Or he. And, uh, or he, or they, or neither. Or both. Uh, super fun. So a little uh, refresher about Roussan. It's a late ripening variety. If we remember from the last time we drank it, it's a late bloomer. It yes. produces powerful white wines that offer pungent perfume Featuring scents of fresh flowers, peaches, herbs, pears, spice, even roasted nuts and hints of pepper. So this is like a really crazy, mm. all over yeah, the place. Complicated. Yeah, yeah, flavor profile. And depending on how you cultivate it and when you harvest it, you're going to get more or less of a lot of these different flavors. So it's kind of fun what you can do with this grape. Um, wines produced from Roussan are typically very rich, uh, like a, a pretty thick mouthfeel for a especially for a white wine um if they're not handled perfectly they can develop kind of an oily texture but if they're handled well the texture is almost kind of like a merlot it's just very silky and kind of velvety on the mouth um these wines are best enjoyed either within the first few years of bottling or after they've been cellared for 15 to 20 years. So the weird thing oh. about Roussan is that you want it either pretty young or old. You don't want it in the middle because it like goes men. to this. Yes, precisely. <laughs> uh, <laughs> or just like people in general. Anyone from like the age 18 to like 29, maybe mm -hmm. just like don't. Um, or female the actors. Formative years. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, but during that in-between period, for some reason that I didn't look too much into, uh, the wines are what's referred to as closed down and their flavors and aromatics are difficult to find. So it sounds like they just kind of tighten up a little bit and you lose a lot of that complexity and that like weird sweet spot after it's grown out of it's aging. And then it can come back, I guess, after, you know, 15 to 20 years of aging, you can get some of those tasting notes back, cool. which is crazy. So Very again, cool. this can be found at most total wine locations. It's around 20 bucks. This is a popper. So if you need mm. a wine key to get one of these beauties open, you can go to our online store at wine and crime podcast .com and put one of our nice pop wine keys in your cart because they are amazing mm -hmm. and if you don't have anything to carry around that nice pop wine key you can get a tote bag mm -hmm. yeah. and if you don't have anything to pour that wine into you can buy a fucking patriarchy flexible wine glass and if you and want to avoid <laughs> water spots on your coffee table we've got uh -huh. poster sets as well that we do. And if you're butt ass naked and don't own a single item of clothing, oh, yeah. you can get a fucking patriarchy sweatshirt. Or a wine and crime t shirt if you're living in a warmer climate. Both will still leave your butt naked, but you know, <laughs> we Pants don't are... have anything for that. You could cover up your nether regions with a sizable A2 bananas coffee mug. <laughs> I think we still have some holiday cards, too. You could just tape them into a belt. <laughs> Love it. All right. Now that we're done shamelessly promoting ourselves, should we pop this open? Yeah. yeah. Let's do it. All right. Oh. Oh, hey there. Nice pad. Yeah. I might have spilled. <laughs> I got a little excited. It's fine. Whoops. It's okay. I'll, right, well, I'll just while drink Amanda it off takes my off desk. her wine drenched pants and constructs a, a loincloth oh. out of holiday cards. Honey, it's <laughs> cute that you think I'm wearing pants. Better than buttons. What? So sweet that you think I'm wearing pants right now. Oh, it's cute. God bless um, you for thinking I still could. <laughs> uh, I got some. I guess. <laughs> if you catch us in your mouth, I'll give you a treat. <laughs> okay, Lucy, what is our background and psych for faked abductions? Well, wouldn't you like to know? I would, so please do your segment. <laughs> <laughs> do your fucking job. All right. Uh, okay, so I came across uh, articles talking about two different types of fake abductions. So we're going to talk about the one that's probably the most apparent first. Um, that is a kidnapping or abduction staged by the victim. Mm -hmm. So these types occur about once a week in the United States overall. Whoa. Yeah. So once a week? Yeah. Um, 
That was just stated in one article, and they didn't have a lot of backup sources, so I'm not going to stick to that 100%, but that's also, Mm -hmm. it's really hard to calculate these faked abductions. Right. Because they're being, you know, they could be prosecuted for any number of crimes. Um, So the, uh, yeah, so given that they occur once a week in the U.S., that's a real problem, that funds and resources are being diverted from actual crimes to cover these Mm -hmm. ones. Yep. Mm-hmm. Also, these cases uh, might discourage actual victims of rape and abuse, let alone kidnapping, from coming forward for fear that they won't be believed. Because oftentimes these cases yeah. are very high profile. Yep. Um, and then as for fake kidnappings that are motivated by something other than money or revenge, which there are those types, those uh, they're very rare if they're not motivated yeah, by I'm money trying, or revenge. I'm trying to think what... We'll get there. What that could even be. Okay. We'll get there. Uh, forensic psychologist Park Dietz is aware of about 50 cases in the United States in the past 20 years of faked abductions not motivated by money or revenge. Wow. But they do happen. Uh, Dr. Dietz coined the term factitious victimization disorder to describe when somebody claims to be a victim to win sympathy or support. Mm-hmm. This is like a weird Munchausen kind of, yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, totally. It definitely is. And also, yeah. uh, while I was researching the psychological factors, I realized there was a lot of overlap with some of the things that Elizabeth Greenwood talks about in her book. Uh, oh, faking one's own death. Yeah, mm. playing dead, uh, how to fake your own death, basically, which is a fabulous mm-hmm. book. We've plugged it a number of times in the show, but I fucking love it. It's so good. Mm-hmm. Um, so these... So faking your own abduction or kidnapping might be done for various reasons. And of course, ransom money or um, mm-hmm. revenge are two of those reasons, of course. But or according, attention. Well, yeah, settle down. <laughs> <laughs> but according to forensic psychologist Dr. Scott Bresler, there may be more psychological reasons, including seeking attention and or sympathy um, mm-hmm. This might be an indication of impulsivity, which could be an indicator of further psychological problems. Okay. Mm-hmm. Seeking reassurance by testing the loyalty of people around them. Oh, yeah. Like that lady. I don't cut this out if you're going to cover this case, but that lady who faked her own well, faked her own death, and then at her funeral, she popped out of the fucking coffin. Oh, my God. I want to do like, that and so was like bad. And basically, like, doing, like, a head count and was like, okay, how these people actually care about me. <gasps> I'm going to pull this shit on YouTube that. so hard. <laughs> so often. Buckle I, up. I saw something on Facebook, or it was some, like, meme somewhere that said, at my funeral, I'm going to request that... They just play Pop Goes the Weasel over and over <laughs> until everyone's just staring at the casket like, oh, my God, what's about to happen? Is it going to happen? What's new, pussycat? Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and I want to share hologram, so there's that. Um, okay, so seeking reassurance by, the loyal- by testing the loyalty of people around them, escaping responsibility, big one, mm-hmm. a big overlap mm-hmm. with the playing dead book. Uh, They could be in a crisis and panicking and needing a way out and then fabricating a story to explain why they were missing. A lot of them, a lot of them turn out to be that. Mm -hmm. Okay. It it could be a cover up for illegal or embarrassing behavior. And one lie leads to another, which leads to another, et cetera. And then all of a sudden you're like being gang banged by leprechauns in the back of a van in a Kmart parking lot. (laughs) <laughs> yep, you know, hate it when that happens. Oh, yep, web of lies. A fair number of cases I saw involved women, and particularly pregnant women, uh, or women who are about to undergo a life change. Um, a fair number of cases. Uh, well, okay, so maybe the the pregnant women were afraid to admit to their pregnancies to like their parents, for example, or they were panicking about them. Mm. Yep. Also, uh, a woman who was going to get... I found a case of a woman who was going to get married the following week, so maybe she was just like, ooh. Cold feet. 
Yeah, and mm. also several cases that I saw stated that after the women confessed or were caught for this faked kidnapping, they said they, quote, just needed some alone time. So oh, for sure. Heard Feel that. girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. Heard that hard. <laughs> Fucking preach. Yeah. Uh, consequences for these can include fines or jail time for false reports, thousands or millions of taxpayer dollars wasted trying to get trying to rescue the victim or solve the crime. Um, mm-hmm. Also, charges of wire fraud. Mm. So the the legal ramifications are are far reaching. It depends on you know how far you go. Um, also, I found an article on DrOz.com with Dr. Oz and Nancy Grace. It was spectacular. But the, Oh, my God. The two most trusted names oh. in <laughs> online information. She was also, like, subtly victim-blaming the entire time. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but the metadata was kind of messed up on this particular website. So the headline was supposed to be the motivation behind faked abductions, but it kept Mm -hmm. switching as I scrolled to lies you've been told about your salmon, which was very confusing. (laughs) (laughs) Clickbait is amazing. The URL. Ten lies you've been told about your salmon. The URL Number eight was, will blow your mind. Was lies about your salmon, but it was clearly this video about Nancy Grace talking about these fake abductions. Like pointing what? her pen at a like, pool full of salmon. Yeah. Oh my Jeez. god. Um, I'm just picturing what was that movie with Ewan McGregor about salmon in like Saudi Arabia? <laughs> oh yeah, that was a good movie. I know. It was kind of a good movie until they had that one shot of him literally walking against a stream of like crowd of people. It was like, yeah. okay. Yeah. We it was also it. like rated PG. We saw it at the uh, I saw it with my dad. It was yeah. good though. Oh my god. Um, Incredible. So I have a really Incredible. funny example of a faked abduction, faked by the so called victim. Uh, in 2011, Brazilian soccer player Somalia. I think that's how you pronounce mm-hmm. his name, claimed that mm-hmm. he had been kidnapped and robbed at gunpoint when in reality he was just late to practice and was trying mm. to get out of the club's 40% wage decrease penalty for tardiness. <laughs> I mean, If you tallied enough. up the crazy-ass lies that I have told to turn in a paper late in school, <laughs> I, yeah, well, that is... Low level he compared ended up, to what I've pulled. He ended up paying a fine of thirteen thousand dollars to avoid a possible Shit. prison sentence for filing a false police report. <laughs> yeah, oh, fuck. which was probably about equal to a forty percent wage decrease. So yeah, good job, dude. Way yeah. to avoid. Yeah. So the mm-hmm. second kind of kidnapping or abduction is that I want to talk about is one staged by a third party. So Mm. I saw a lot of articles and videos about this specific topic because in late 2017, the FBI launched a campaign to promote awareness of these fake kidnappings. So basically, there's been an increasing number of these scams where somebody calls um, usually a parent and tells them that they have their child and will kill the child if the parent Mm. doesn't send them money. Mm -hmm. So they threaten to kill the child also if the parent hangs up the phone so they can't call the authorities. Mm. Often, often there will be a voice screaming in the background. So the parent, oh my God, the parent panics and then they'll do Mm. whatever the fuck the the scammer wants them to do. Like that is so fucked up. It gets even more fucked up. The FBI says that a lot of these scam phone calls are traced to Mexican prisons Interesting. Where, where the prisoners Prisons? use, where they use smuggled cell phones and randomly dial U.S. phone numbers. It's completely random. Hmm. And then they, they just say, I have your child and there's somebody screaming. And like, if I got the phone call, it'd be like, uh, I don't have a n- child. Wrong yeah, number. wrong number. Yeah, hang and, up. and then they try again and then it works. And then they extort 15 grand out of someone. Holy shit. Because they're prisoners. They have nothing better to do. They well, have nothing, nothing to lose. lose. Yeah. yeah. Um, So they randomly dial U.S. phone numbers, and then the prisoner's friends or family members pick up the money from whatever money transfer location. Often they make the victims drop off money at several different money wiring service locations, probably just to, you know, spread it out, make it harder to Mm -hmm. trace. Hmm. 
And of course, they're not all from prisons and not all from Mexico, but many of the calls have been traced by the FBI to such locations. So That's so interesting. If you receive a phone call and uh, the person is insisting that you do not hang up the phone mm-hmm. and that you do this as soon as possible. Just risk it. Uh, just risk it. <laughs> <laughs> your kid's probably fine. <laughs> just risk the life of your child. I mean... <laughs> The odds of that being the truth are very, very slim. Mm-hmm. So right. I understand why people don't don't want to risk it and why parents panic. But ugh, it yeah. sucks. It sucks that that stupid ass scam works so well. They're preying on people's emotions, and it's just like yeah. it's the most hastily, poorly executed thing. But like, yeah, parents work. will do whatever to save yeah. their child. So. Yeah. yeah, roll it's the dice. Luck be yeah. a lady tonight. <laughs> Make sure to blow on them first. <laughs> but yeah, oh my gosh. that's my say. Luck be a lady tonight. Luck be a lady tonight. Luck be a lady tonight. Luck be a lady to begin with. Luck be a lady tonight. If you find yourself gambling with your children's lives. <laughs> if you find yourself breaking into song. If you find luck be a lady to be trapped in your head for upwards of 48 hours. If you know you all might of need the lyrics. Talk space. Oh, I know all of the lyrics. That's why One you of have the talk three space. of us was a musical theater kid. Hi. FYI. Can you guess which Hi, one? Guys <laughs> and dolls. Okay. <laughs> okay. Transitioning talk space. If you have been kidnapped or were ever tempted to fake your own abduction, Mm -hmm. then it's probably time to talk to a professional. Yeah. I mean, even if it's not even that much of a traumatic experience and you just need to talk to somebody about your everyday life, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you could do that too. Yeah. And you don't even need to leave... The purview of your captors. You mm-hmm. can just test a therapist. <laughs> oh you don't even need to God. leave your Mexican prison. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, no, but for real, Talkspace is amazing. Um, they have licensed, qualified therapists that can help you with any range of issues. They specialize in different issues. So when you do your like intake questionnaire, you can say kind of what you're hoping to get out of the experience and what types of issues you think you want to focus on. And then they will tailor recommendations for therapists uh, to that. And then you can choose from those recommendations. And if you're not happy with your first selection, you can always change your therapist at Mm -hmm. any time. Um, All three of us use it. All three of us are paying customers. We love it. We use our promo code, obviously. Yeah. (laughs) To get 30 bucks off our first month. But... We've all continued to use it. Eight months ago. Yeah, we've Mm -hmm, all continued to mm -hmm. use it, and it's great. And uh, you can suspend your account when you're not needing it. So uh, I actually am about to do this for the first time because my therapist is getting married. Congratulations Mm. to her. At least somebody (laughs) is. Um, (laughs) And so she, I know, I'm just (laughs) being bitter. But uh, she's going to be taking some time off. So she even suggested like, hey, I'm going to be gone for this time. Just go ahead and suspend your account so you're not charged. And then Mm -hmm. you can reactivate it when I'm, you know, back in my office hours and we'll pick up where we left off. So they're very like conscientious of not only your mental health situation, but your financial situation and like making sure that everything's working for you. So it's super convenient. It's awesome. Yep. You don't need to put on pants. You don't need to leave your house. You can text, voice memo, or um, video call your therapist. They have office hours, but you can message them at any time. Mm -hmm. Uh, And, yeah, we love it. So for $30 off your first month of Talkspace, go to Talkspace.com forward slash gals, G-A-L-S. Again, 30 bucks off your first month. Uh, Talkspace.com forward slash gals. Treat your brain. Treat your brain. Treat your brain. Love it. All right. Also, on to our next advertiser. Oh, my Mm -hmm. goodness. Storyworth. What is Storyworth? Oh, let me tell you. (laughs) (laughs) Storyworth makes it easy and fun for your loved ones to share their stories with weekly emailed story prompts, questions that you have never thought to ask them. Mm. At the end of the year, 
they'll get their stories bound in a beautiful hardcover book. And this is a great way to strengthen your family bonds and get to know your loved ones in a whole new way. Cool. Mm -hmm. It is really cool getting to uh, connect with your family in this way. Um, and like Lucy said, it's a great way to stay in touch. I'm very far away from all of my family, um, mm -hmm. but StoryWorth uh, helps me stay in touch and helps bridge that geographic distance by providing these really interesting like discussion topics so sometimes it can be hard to just like strike up a conversation especially you know with like a grandparent mm -hmm. and really get to those interesting good stories that they have um but StoryWorth is a really good platform to help you do that um so it can help you learn about your relatives uh these questions elicit like really entertaining and surprising and even sometimes like moving responses mm -hmm. um and it's a really great way with the hardcover book at the end to preserve your family memories and to even pass on these treasures to your children if you have them or plan to have them and you know future families um so StoryWorth gives you one year of weekly story prompts and uh, then a hardcover printed book at the end, which can be up to 480 pages. So it's wow. a full on book. It's not mm -hmm. just like a little album. It's like a full on thing. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the person that you gift this to can write their stories and also upload photos by email, online, or uh, via the app. So it's really convenient. That's so cool. Uh, you can also invite an unlimited number of people to receive these stories. So, like, I have a pretty big family on my mom's side, so it'd be really cool to get multiple people involved. You can save and edit all of the stories on StoryWorth.com, so you can kind of keep an eye on the progress of the development over the year that you're doing this with a loved one. Um, the data is completely secure. Everything is completely private. You control who sees the stories. Um, so that get, provides just that extra layer of comfort to your family member who might be answering some questions that would elicit some of those moving responses. They can do so with uh, the full discretion of privacy. Yeah. And, it's not uh, social media. It's private. No, mm -hmm. Exactly. And again, we are just right around the corner for Mother's Day and Father's Day. So even as a last minute, really, really personal, moving and out of the box gift, uh, this would be a great option. Yeah, and uh, for my personal experience with this, uh, it was probably eight or nine years ago, I attempted to do essentially this on my own with my grandma because she mm -hmm. was the oldest of like 13 children. She helped raise them during the Great Depression. She's had like the coolest life ever. She has mm -hmm. all these photographs. So I tried to put together a story myself with her and did all these interviews and it was just it didn't turn out well. Mm. <laughs> so It's really hard. It's a lot of work. It's, it's hard a to do ton it on your own. of work. Yeah, it's a ton of work. So I was thrilled to hear about StoryWorth. Mm -hmm. I intend to gift this to my grandma for Mother's Day and um also considering including uh, my dad and my uncles as well. And I I am a writer. I, I like to write, so I am going to help them like kind of finesse and all that stuff. So I'm just super eager to have the opportunity to do the aspects of this storytelling situation that I enjoy, like going through the photos and, you know, talking to them about it and mm -hmm, hearing their mm -hmm. stories, but having all of the hard work done on the back end by the StoryWorth people. So... I could not be more yeah. excited about this. I am just super jazzed. So I'll keep you guys filled in how this sort of pans out over the next year. Love I'm excited it. to hear your grandma's stories. She's oh. a cool lady. She's got mm -hmm. the craziest stories, you guys. The craziest. So good. Yeah. Well, for $20 off, you can visit storyworth.com forward slash gals and enter promo code gals when you subscribe. Again, that's $20 off at storyworth.com forward slash gals, S T O R Y W O R T H dot com forward slash G A L S. You enter that promo code gals when you subscribe and you get that 20 bucks off. Mm -hmm. Nice. Treat your mom, dad, self, family, anyone. Treat your ancestors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Treat your lineage. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Oh so stupid. Okay. My case, really bonkers. Oh, of course. 
I would expect nothing less from you. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So in July, 2017, so just last year, um, 20 year old British model, Chloe Ayling Mm -hmm. was, uh, abducted from the streets of Milan by quote, balaclava wearing thugs. Mm. I love baklava. (laughs) I am so hungry. I know. Did I, did I, did I fuck it up? Cause I tried really no. hard to say it right. No, okay. no, just you said, said it before, right. Before I get the two confused and I love yep. baklava. So yep. yeah, I <laughs> do love that. baklava. I don't love balaclavas unless I have to shovel the driveway. Me either, yeah. because they always ruin your hair, your makeup, your nose runs yeah. all over it. Like I'm a diehard yeah. Minnesotan at this point, yeah. but I'll still never get on board with that crap. The snot Sorry. factor is a, too much. Is too much. Yeah. And the balaclava yeah. like ushers the snot into like it pulls it at <laughs> your bottom lip. Yep. So it's like yeah. you can't escape it. You're just anyway. asking to be one of those red outer rim lipped people. Yup. If you Can't. are so cold that you just don't give any fucks at all, then it's just great. Just stay inside. Mm-hmm. But just stay inside. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Maybe that I'm not going to move back. Okay. No, you are. So <laughs> let's <laughs> let's back up for a sec. So Chloe Ailing is an aspiring or somewhat working, uh, quote, glamour model. So she's not a fashion model, but she's more like an Instagram model. I was just going to ask if this was more of an Instagram thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly what kind of gigs she was booking, but it was much, she's, she's more curvy. She's not like a runway skinny, skinny type. She's more like curvaceous Instagram-y. Great. Love it. Yeah. Favorite. Um, not sure how much professional modeling she had done up to that point, but she did have an agent at a professional modeling agency. Okay. Good to know. Um, there are photos of her on the drive if you want to go look, and these will be on the blog, but I purposely did not include any of her modeling photos because, just a reminder, the title of this episode is Faked Abductions. Okay. Well, Was it a faked modeling career then, too? Yeah, somewhat. Okay, so Chloe is a mother. Happy Mother's Day. Uh, She has a two-year-old son, Ashton, who lives full-time with his father, which is her ex. Mm -hmm. Um, Chloe said that he's two, but actually he is several months shy of his second birthday. Okay. I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt that she knew that and was just Just trying to be succinct. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um... She was in Italy for a photo shoot, um, which had been arranged through her agent and was to be held at a recognized Milanese uh, photography studio. Um, Chloe's agent said that the modeling agency does their due diligence when it comes to working with new clients, new photographers. Um, And so the agency was like, yeah, we, we followed up. We made sure that it was legit, that we weren't sending her to anything sketchy yeah you know but they're also covering their own ass um by saying that anyway they said that there was nothing about this gig that raised any concerns for them okay so she shows up to the photo shoot which had been paid for in advance um and possibly she realizes that it's bogus okay or possibly she hasn't figured that out yet but or possibly way, she knew all along. Right. Mm. Oh, the possibilities. I'm so hungry. <laughs> she is in Italy. <laughs> I'm so, this is home of the absurd. possibilities. <laughs> I'm trying to okay. drown my hunger pangs with wine. <laughs> yeah. And food related puns. Every week. <laughs> wine diet. Mm-hmm. Okay. Not right. So she is plucked off the street. Stuffed into a black bag, put in the trunk of a car, and driven to an isolated safe house, which she later found out were in the mountains outside of Turin, some four hours away. Okay. She later described the kidnapping in further detail, uh, saying basically, like, a man wearing black gloves came up from behind her and covered her mouth and then grabbed her neck. Okay. Um... 
and then a second man injected something into her right forearm. Woof. All right. She, quote, I think I lost consciousness. When I woke up, I was wearing a pink bodysuit and socks. Okay. And socks? Ick. <laughs> 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 you lost me at socks. <laughs> you really <laughs> did. <laughs> I'm questioning pink. everything at this point. Yep. What kidnappers get a pink velour bodysuit? Or socks. To place velour? their victim in. Yes, it was. Oh my god. But yes. also, why add socks? Yeah, why <sighs> would you care about the, the foot temperature of your right. victim? Hmm. Yeah. It's all fishy to me. <laughs> it's seriously mm. fishy, and I seriously still want pasta. Mm-hmm. In the trunk of the car, Chloe's wrists and ankles were handcuffed with um, adhesive tape. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> More socks. <laughs> By socks. There were, there were elaborate sock cuffs. Mm-hmm. Um, the sock bandits. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there was adhesive tape covering her mouth. She was inside the black bag again, and she said that she struggled to breathe, but managed to find a small hole that she could breathe through. That's what she said. Gross. (laughs) Or he. (laughs) Or Or they. Neither or both. Yeah. Yeah, I I mean, all of that applies, but the joke is that's what she said. Right. (laughs) Wait, explain. Can you explain the joke and that's what she said in detail? Start at the beginning. I can. (laughs) <laughs> it begins okay. with Michael Scott. <laughs> it ends with Michael Scott. Michael Scott. <laughs> okay. So after being drugged, handcuffed, gagged, and sockified. Mm. Um, and socked. Also, <laughs> and socked. And driven about 120 miles away to near the French border. The kidnappers uh, then bring Chloe inside to this, like, safe house. And at some point, change her clothes before re-handcuffing her hands to her feet and also to a dresser. This is bizarre. How many wardrobe changes does this kidnapping (laughs) require? It's not a freaking Celine Dion concert. If I had a velour (laughs) bodysuit, you bet your ass I would never wear anything else. I mean, yeah. (laughs) I would resist the costume change before resisting anything else. Mm-hmm. I know I told you that you guys could wear whatever you wanted to my wedding as bridesmaids, but I'm going to yes, have yes, to yes, insist yes, on yes, pink yes, velour yes, bodysuits. Yes, 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 And socks. And socks. I'm on board. <laughs> okay. So uh, after a few days, Chloe said they uncuffed her and allowed her to walk freely around the farmhouse, but that she was too terrified to try to escape. Okay. All right. Her captors initially demanded a ransom of approximately 270,000 pounds from okay. Miss Ailing's agent. Okay, well, first, one of them emailed a bunch of newspapers trying to sell the story of a, quote, British glamour model kidnapped and sold as sex slave. Mm-hmm. When none of the newspapers wanted to buy that story, <laughs> then... <laughs> They demanded 270,000 pounds from her agent with the threat that if the ransom wasn't paid, Chloe would be sold as a sex slave in the Middle East. Oh, Lord. Specific. Yeah. Yeah. Not at all the plot of the movie taken. Yeah. (laughs) She was a sex slave in, like, Turkey, though. Is that the Middle East? Was she Mm. the Middle East? I thought she was in, like, pretty Western Europe. She was... In Paris, I think, the whole movie, but the the person that they were trying to sell her to was, like, an Arab sheikh or something. It was su- super dumb. Yeah. Okay. But also, so, incredible movie. I want to go watch that right now. Yeah. Incredible Let's wrap movie. This up. Not at all real. Okay. Special thanks. So, <laughs> <laughs> Liam Neeson. Yes. Truly. Okay. So, some reports cite that the kidnappers demanded that the ransom be paid in Bitcoin. So, oh, Amanda, yes, yes. You understand everything about Bitcoin. It's monopoly I'll take money. It. I don't understand how that's real currency. You wouldn't understand because you don't have <laughs> stock in, in cryptocurrency. Litecoin. 
So I'm super glad I don't. <laughs> shh, 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 Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> okay. So they were demanding 50,000 bitcoins, um, and the men claimed to be part of a dark web group known as the Black Death. Amazing. Oh, Lord. <laughs> so... Th- I love these idiots so much. (laughs) The the Black Death Group is a shadowy online criminal network believed to have links to the Russian mafia, if it exists. Mm. Um, The group is alleged to engage in kidnapping and extortion, but little is known about which crimes can actually be attributed to them. Mm. Okay. Mm. All right, so Chloe's kidnapping might have been the first... God. All right. <laughs> so, who are these alleged kidnappers? We have Lukaj, Lucas, Lukaj, Lukaj, okay. and Lukaj, and Mikhail Erba. Erba Life. Erba Life. They also ran a popular pyramid scheme. <laughs> Multi level marketing. I mean, it's more believable than. <laughs> Death Star Silk Road or whatever it is. Black Death. <laughs> Black Death. Death Star Silk Road. <laughs> okay. So uh Lukaj is 30 and his brother Mikhail is 36, and they are both Polish. Um Chloe says that when she was with them, she was quote terrified second by second, minute by minute, hour Ugh. by hour. Go away. I mean, okay. Sure, but still. If you had actually been kidnapped, I would have bought it. But judging from the topic of this episode, I'm guessing right. you weren't. So go fuck yourself. I don't think that anyone who was actually kidnapped would describe their kidnapping in such shitty prose. Yeah, right. That's very true. Minute by second by second, minute by minute, hour by hour. Yeah, it's just a <laughs> I was bad fucking song. scared as fuck. I thought they yeah. were gonna kill me. I yeah. shit my tracksuit every minute of every second of every hour. <laughs> my That's... pink velour bodysuit. Yeah, my velour bodysuit. <laughs> it ran brown. brown. Yeah. It ran by down to my socks, end. so they had to change my socks too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Speaking of changing. Okay. Um, she also told investigators, however, that Lukaj was a kindly captor with whom she developed a, quote, trusting relationship. Mm. Um, She claims he was the one that removed the tape from her mouth, allowed her to shower, and gave her fresh t-shirts and underwear each day during her captivity. What about the socks? Yep. (laughs) Um... She also said that from the second night of her, quote, ordeal, that she and Lukaj shared a double bed, but that he did not sexually molest her, except to stare at her while she showered. Well, what a gentleman. Mm -hmm. Peeping Tom. Peeping Lukaj. Peeping Lukaj. And she said that Lukaj was the one to decide to let Chloe go after oh. finding out that she was a mother. Oh, and that it how kind. tore at his heartstrings to find out that she had a young son back in Britain. Mm-hmm. None of this is like trustworthy. <laughs> yeah. Remotely even plausible. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so is it a hoax? Yes. yes. yes special thanks (laughs) i love when we fast forward to special things it's my favorite (laughs) and one day when it really happens it'll be a dream come true (laughs) oh we should do an april fool's episode now we have to wait a whole fucking year god damn it now you've already said it on air so never mind (laughs) nah we're fine people won't remember okay they definitely won't it'll be hilarious Lukaj's girlfriend, Natalia, claims that he is a narcissist and megalomaniac, Mm. always making grandiose claims of being a wealthy business owner, despite sharing a low-income council flat with his older brother. So I think like like a free housing or subsidized housing, basically, in the UK. Okay. Um, so they're both Polish, but they live in the UK. The brothers. Okay. And they're in Italy for this goddamn yep. bullshit thing. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. 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 
He also claimed, according to his girlfriend, to have been a hitman and own a sniper rifle and uh. have ties to various Eastern European mafia networks. Mm. Okay. Um, he allegedly all. told Italian police when he was arrested, after all this shit went down, that he was uh, forced to do the kidnapping by a Romanian gang in order to pay for his leukemia treatments. Oh, my God. No evidence to suggest that Lukaj has ever had or has leukemia. Oh, my God. Okay. Um, and also, he has since recanted this statement that he told Italian police. Because mm. it was bullshit. Yep. Okay. So... Tiny bits of evidence to suggest that maybe this whole fucking thing is real, but it's obviously not. But we're going to try to show you the evidence for it being real. Mm-hmm. Hair, presumably Chloe's, was found in the trunk of the car in question. Okay. Um, also, a syringe mark was found on the young model's arm. Okay. But also, like, she was held in captivity for six days and said that she was drugged. When she was taken, so, like, is a single syringe mark going to still be visible after six days? Mm-hmm. Will it? Yeah. I don't think I, so. I mean, I, it depends, because you can get, like, bruising around an injection site. Yeah, that if will they were really first. bad at it, maybe. And it also depends on the kind of syringe that they're using, because we've talked about this before. Like, yeah. diabetic sur- syringes are subcutaneous. It only needs to go under the skin, so they're really, really itty-bitty. Mm-hmm. Mm, but so they're not going to leave go into a vein, right? They're not going to leave much of a mark. But if you're getting, if you get a bigger, like a larger gauge syringe, I could see a little scab lasting, you know, for a six week or so. days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's plausible. It's plausible. Um, emails between Lukaj and his brother Mikhail uh, also reveal them planning to purchase a large black bag, duct tape, and a gun prior to the abduction. Duct tape. <laughs> Did they get their large um, black bag from away.com? Oh my god, I hope so. <laughs> the larger carry on. The yeah. lifetime guarantee they could return it after the kidnapping. And get a refund. full charge of their phone. <laughs> That's a freebie away. You're yep. welcome. You're welcome. Yep. We like your product that much. <laughs> Okay, and last but not least, there is a photo of Chloe apparently drugged uh, in a pink bodysuit with one nipple hanging out. Free the nipples. How many socks? (laughs) We don't see the socks. One sock hanging out. It's it's (laughs) just torso and up. A Um, lewd photo of one exposed sock. (laughs) (laughs) Gives validity to the whole story. I'm fully on board now. (laughs) Yep. <laughs> um, but she's not wearing any makeup in the photo, and it was posted to the dark web. Uh, and and it was hashtagged, <laughs> hashtag no makeup, hashtag no filter. <laughs> yeah. What does it matter well, that she's not wearing makeup? Because she was abducted, like, en route to a photo shoot or something. Oh. No, 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 no. This is the tenuous piece. This is how people are trying to say that this is evidence that it's real. Oh. Because... Those who know her claim that she never would have allowed a photo of herself with no makeup untouched to oh. be posted online. My. <laughs> like, unretouched? Oh, my God. God. Yeah. Good yeah. Lord. Hashtag no so filter. They're saying, oh, so God. they're saying it must be real. Oh, because... my God. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> That's embarrassing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Evidence suggesting that this whole fucking thing is bullshit. Mm-hmm. Number one, it's obviously bullshit. <laughs> Number two. <laughs> Number the two, socks. this episode is called Faked Abductions. Number three. <laughs> um, all right. Their relationship, which she called trusting, must have certainly been fucking trusting because not only did Lukaj let Chloe go after just six days and without any of the ransom being paid. Mm-hmm. But he also escorted her personally inside the British consulate in Milan in order to do so, essentially guaranteeing that he would be arrested for the crime. Yeah. What is this guy's chick? Yeah. What's his Like, motivation? he didn't just, like, drop her off somewhere in Milan and was, like, right. like, speed away. He was like, let me personally walk you into the consulate where you can right. tell your story. What in the world? I don't get that. I don't get it. 
Um, now at trial, the alleged kidnapper uh, has spun an entirely different tale, claiming that after Chloe arrived in Italy, the two met in person for two hours and discussed feigning the kidnapping as a publicity stunt. Mm-hmm. Okay. It started to become Quote. more plausible mm-hmm. to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Quote, Chloe wrote the ransom notes with me. My English isn't too good. She mm-hmm. collaborated. She knew that when all the scandal was over, she would earn a lot of money and publicity. Mm-hmm. So okay. he, he would have gotten the 270,000 pounds and she would have just gotten fame and publicity? Or they would have shared it. Yeah, probably shared it. Or even if the ransom wasn't paid, she would still get all this publicity and maybe give him some money for doing this. I'm not sure. Also, he's like almost guaranteed to be in prison, though. I don't know, you guys. This plan seems pretty foolproof. (laughs) Airtight. (laughs) I don't know why you're naysaying so much. I see no problems with this. Suspicious Um, Aloysius. That's why. Also, Lukash and Chloe had been communicating via Facebook for the past two years. Oh, great. So Russia has all their information. Oh, an anonymous so kidnapper. He, so he definitely wasn't <laughs> like a <laughs> Polish photographer living in Britain, randomly planning a photo shoot right. in Italy, randomly calling up her agency and booking her. Uh-huh. Um, Bullshit. Oh also, a friend of Chloe's told reporters that the two had met in person at a Paris photo shoot months before the alleged kidnapping. Interesting. So there are, like, witnesses to that fact, or at least one? Yep. At mm. least one witness that they had met in person months before all of this. Mm. Um, there's also CCTV footage of the pair walking Always. hand. <laughs> <laughs> Always. <laughs> this is going to make the um, best Lifetime movie, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Of the pair walking hand in hand the day before her release down, like, the streets of Italy. Um, And shopkeepers remember them buying groceries and shoes together, appearing like a couple in love. They did this so well. They executed this fucking flawlessly, and I (laughs) can't wait to see where this goes. It fucking gets better. Literally stuck on the socks. I'm stuck on the socks. (laughs) Lucy can't uh, unhinge herself from the sock situation. What kind of shoes were they buying that were identified by the shopkeepers? <laughs> Could the socks fit in the shoes? Were they open-toed <laughs> shoes? Oh, God, that would be the real crime. Wearing Not socks with open-toed woman. shoes. Okay, so um, Lukaj also treated Chloe to breakfast at a cafe in central Milan the morning that he set her free as a consulate. So good right now. I would and love to be treated to breakfast by my kidnapper. In right central now. Milan, specifically. <laughs> yep. Yep. Right? How good does that sound? <laughs> um, and the waiter told police that the two seemed relaxed, laughing, mm-hmm. and joking amongst themselves, and that they were there for approximately two hours. Of course. God, wouldn't you be? <sighs> okay. Lukaj <laughs> claims that neither he nor his brother ever drugged Chloe and that drug t- and uh, drug testing backs this up uh, because they tested Chloe's hair and it revealed that while the young model had consumed the drug ketamine, mm. oh. the last time that she'd actually ingested it had been some two months prior to Get her Get your special K on, kidnapping. Girl. Ketamine is fucked, you guys. I've uh, never yeah. personally tried it, but I've seen people no. on it, and it is disturbing. Never it's intentionally tried it. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, forgot about that. Never yeah. Mind. yeah. Watch your drinks. Y'all. Hi, Mom. And go yeah. out with a close friend. Yeah, yeah. always um, go out with a girlfriend. Yeah. Anyway, so they, they tested her hair, and it was like, uh, yeah, last time you did ketamine was two months ago, yeah. not this week. But cute. Yeah. <laughs> Good try. Um, this is the least convincing argument that it's all bullshit, but I just wanted to throw it in there. Um, a lot of people are saying that she didn't show any signs of trauma after the event, but yeah. obviously that's super subjective, subjective and mm-hmm. like, yeah. So this isn't all that convincing, but they note that she continued to book gigs like immediately after she was 
freed, basically. I mean, it's, yeah, it's like, suspicious. Yeah. And that she would, quote, rush off in hot pants to a topless what? photo shoot while smiling for the paps. Well, I mean, whatever. <laughs> That's fu- some fucking patriarchy shit right there yeah, for sure. Yeah, but that's, yeah, she is yeah. bogus. But uh, yeah. if you can pull off hot pants, and even if you can't, God bless you. Yeah. God bless you. You know how yeah. you know if you can pull off hot pants? If you can pull pants on. If you can wear <laughs> hot pants. Yeah. If you, yeah, want to If you can to wear, wear them, hot you pants. can pull them off. You yeah. go. Anyway, Damn. so that that's the least convincing. We're going to go from least convincing to most convincing. Most Are you ready? smartest. Yeah. I'm hanging on. Perhaps most damning of all, though, Chloe posted a semi-nude selfie to her Instagram during her alleged confinement. (laughs) (laughs) No. No, girl. Yes. No. Hashtag kidnapped, y'all. Ooh. Hashtag vanity to end all vanity. That is incredible. Do I love a good nude <laughs> selfie. Any in any Send me nude self- She's like, damn, I look good in these socks. Right. <laughs> but like, maybe you should have scheduled that post out a little farther. Right. To, to keep your rules. Take the photo, save it to your, you know, yep. photo reel yeah. or whatever. And Sometimes then that like kidnap dungeon lighting is real fucking good though. Oh yeah. no, no, no. It you was take not a kidnap dungeon shot. It was her posing with duck lips <gasps> and like bedhead wearing only a duvet cover. Please tell us to go to the drive right now. Go to the drive. Yes! yes thank God. <laughs> thank oh. God. Okay, okay, okay. Here we go. Here we go. Oh my God, I found it. Where'd that duvet go? Where'd oh that God. duvet see it? Did it's, I post it? I think I posted so lo- it. Oh, wait. No, that's just a different disturbing photo. Oh, damn, I might not have posted it. God no, damn it, Kenyon, get it now. Go, go, okay. go, go. <laughs> Chloe Ailing. Okay. Shit, why didn't I post it on the drive? Because you have failed as a human There's being. her with a fluffy cat. I do like which that Which I cat. approve of. Her she eyebrows is very pretty. Are, yeah, her eyebrows are insanely beautiful. Mm-hmm. Okay. That okay. cat has nose, has eye boogers. Something needs but to happen to that just cat. A baby. All right, I'm uploading it right now to the drive. Yes, 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 yes. Is it there? Is it there yet? I don't know. I have to refresh. Okay, hold on. Oh God. Refresh. Refresh. Quack, 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 quack. Oh no, it's still uploading. I have so many tabs open. It's taking so long. It's there. It's there. It's there. Refresh. 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 Duck lips. Look for the duck lips. Go. 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 Oh my God! I see it. O, M. G. I'm closing all yep. my other tabs. I mean, I love this photo. She, her hair is amazing. I bet oh. she takes it off. <laughs> she looks fucking fabulous, though. But also, that is mid kidnapping. <laughs> no. I mean, if I looked that good being kidnapped, I would never not be kidnapped. There's either <laughs> mascara happening or she got like fillers on her bottom lids, which is mm. kind of insane, I feel. Mm hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that could she's be fucking natural. gorgeous. Just saying. Yeah. Well, that's why I didn't post any of her modeling photos because if she faked this whole thing, then she's a fucking psychopath. Yeah, and her I don't soul want is to. ugly, but yeah. her eyebrows are fucking phenomenal. Okay. So, anyway, that's the most damning evidence. I want that to be the in my opinion. On my gravestone. Her soul right, was but- ugly, but her eyebrows were on fleek. <laughs> Keep. <laughs> All right, my favorite part of this damaged. whole case mm-hmm. is that if this was faked, which it clearly was, mm-hmm. and she helped plan it, then she is still letting this dude take the fall because yep. he is fucking at trial. Oh. And she she is cooperating with police, showing them around the photography studio and the safe house, being like, this is where I was chained up. This is blah, blah, Once you get blah. that deep into a lie, it can be hard to get out, I will but say. But this dude yeah. that she helped plan it with, she's going to let him go to jail? Yeah. yeah. She's going to let that yeah. bitch hang. Yeah. So she's denying her eyebrows will carry her for the rest of her career. 
honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, she's been going on morning shows to discuss the physical and psychological violence and trauma that she endured. Mm -hmm. um, oh, my God. And one more thing to note, she has since fired her modeling agent and hired a new agent who specializes in working with celebrities. So oh, she's good. moving on up. Did good her old her. agent pay the 270? No. Okay, good. So yeah, cool. nobody was paid. Nobody was paid. Is she her any parents more famous? don't believe it. Her, well, we're talking about her right now, I guess. Yeah, I her, guess. Her parents were interviewed, and they were like, I don't know. You have to ask Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally all of our parents. Like, that is amazing. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't I know. just don't want to be involved in this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just want to get the boat on the lake and get some walleye. Yeah. <laughs> it's essentially how all of our parents feel about our podcast. Yep. Like, I don't listen. Oh. It's their thing, whatever. I wash my hands of this. <laughs> I mean, yeah. my mom is a consistent listener. Hi, mom. She's literally Hi, the Suzanne. only one. Hi, Suzanne. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so that is my case. That is Chloe Ailing, and you can, um, I couldn't find out any update about the trial, whether or not he was convicted or if she's been charged with anything, but. I'm going to find her on Instagram right now. Follow Ooh, hashtag follow back Chloe. Who was that bitch who like killed her mom on a cruise or in Aruba or whatever? Uh, she never followed yeah. us back or yeah. accepted our follow request. She has a private account and I requested mm -hmm. and then I realized that from, she would never accept. She hasn't. From Indonesian prison. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> With Yikes. her boyfriend. Though. Anyway, yeah, that's my case. All Love right. It. Good job. And now a word from our sponsor. Oh yeah. Oh. Warby Parker glasses will provide all the style you need to travel your road with class, and their price will leave you with some extra cash to use on your journey. Um, Warby Parker gives you a free uh, try-on program, which is really great. I've done it. Um, basically, you order five pairs of glasses at all the different, you know, five different styles that you think might work for you, and you uh, can try them on in your home at your convenience for five days, and there's no obligation to buy, so if none of them work for you, you know, it's all free. Um, everything ships free. So once you do the try-on, then you ship it all back. Um, it, re it includes a prepaid return shipping label. Um, and then if there's a style or two or three or five that you want <laughs> to purchase, uh, then you can do that after you know that it's going to work on your face. Mm -hmm. um, so you can head to warbyparker.com forward slash gals to order your free home try-on today. Um, another great thing, all the glasses start at $95, including those with prescription lenses. Um, and all of the lenses include an anti-glare and anti-scratch coatings. So I'm one of those people that is really hard on my sunglasses. Same. I just, mm -hmm. so all of my glasses. throw them in my purse with my coins and my credit cards and my, yeah, keys mm -hmm. and uh, you know whatever but my warby parkers and i have several pairs they have lasted for years scratch free it's amazing mm -hmm. um also really cool thing for every pair you buy a pair is distributed to someone in need so cool philanthropy so nice um after you head to warbyparker.com forward slash gals and place your home try on order, you should download the Warby Parker app. It's for the iPhone. You can get it from the iPhone app store. It's pretty cool. So they built this home try on companion feature, which allows you to quickly take photos wearing all the frames, stitch it into a video, and then you can like see it rapid fire side by side to help you make a decision. You can share it with friends and family. You can have people like make a game out of it, help you pick a winner. Uh, I love that because I always text my mom when I'm getting new glasses and I'm like, hey, which one of these pairs do you like? And this just makes that whole experience really fun and way easier. Mm -hmm. mm. I totally missed the ball on the video, on the video mm -hmm. feature on the app, but I had some friends over once my home try on kit mm -hmm. came <laughs> and they like helped me decide and I provided like chips and salsa. It was perfect. Love but it. that said, my I've been using Warby Parker for 
years and I am completely mm -hmm. satisfied with everything. They keep, the website and the whole company keeps coming up with new innovations to make it easier for you to try them on and like find your right size and upload your prescription and everything. It, it could not be more simple. Mm -hmm. um, this last round, I ordered a pair of prescription sunglasses mm -hmm. and I ordered the home try on and I had like a bunch of different varieties of sunglasses and I normally go for the bigger lenses just because I just always have gone for the bigger ones but there was a pair that were like kind of smaller and more rounded a little more trendy a little more John Lennon-ish and I was Ooh. I was kind of on the fence but then like I got all this feedback from my friends that were like oh yeah you should do that and so I ordered those I absolutely love them mm -hmm. and it helped so much that my friends were there to like you know support my decision because it's hard to find a pair of glasses mm -hmm. and maybe a little less hard to find sunglasses but it's accessories for your face it changes the way that you're perceived by the world so it's important mm -hmm. to have options and feedback um mm -hmm. so yeah it was an amazing experience i love my sunglasses they could not be cooler um another cool thing if you have an iphone 10 you can mm -hmm. download warby parker's app where you can use their brand new feature called find your fit Ooh. And this feature uses um, the iPhone X's uh, true depth camera to map and measure key facial features. So oh, it'll just cool. it will help the glasses fit better. It'll it'll help you find better fits for your face. So it'll use these measurements, uh, and then it will recommend approximately twelve Warby Parker frames that wow. are likely to fit best to best fit your face. That's the process. So cool. It's seamless. It takes a few seconds. It's super high tech. It's so cool. Like it, the, I love Warby Parker. I don't have a single bad thing to say about it. I've been using it for years, as I've said. Same. Love it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Same. Love them. Mm -hmm. uh, so to order your uh, at home try on kit uh, with free shipping and a prepaid return label, use uh, the URL warbyparker.com forward slash gals. So that's W A R B Y. P-A-R-K-E-R dot com forward slash G-A-L-S. And um, please note that with this URL, it's case sensitive. So the gals bit has to be lowercase. G-A-L-S. Mm -hmm. Make sure your All caps right. lock isn't on and yep. treat, yeah. treat your face. Treat your, treat your eyes. <laughs> mm. Love it. And now a word from our other sponsor. Nutrafol is a new, safe, and effective strategy to take control of your hair health. Made with 100% drug-free nutraceutical ingredients, mm, uh, clinically shown to improve thinning hair. Need that. So, Nutrafol, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, have I mentioned my bald spot that I have acquired <laughs> since forming this podcast? It's have no I big deal. Have I mentioned how it's much fine. I have pulled out my eyelashes from stress <laughs> over the last year? Mm -hmm. My dermatillomania? Yeah, yeah. No, it's fine. Um, <laughs> all right. Nutrafol's formulas are specifically developed uh, with your lifestyles and life cycles in mind. So whether your hair health uh, concerns are primarily due to genetics or stressful daily demands, Demands of work-life podcast balance, <laughs> um, <laughs> environmental toxins, or the unavoidable changes of our bodies turning 30. Um, <laughs> the bottom line is stress is not our hair follicles best friend. Nope, definitely not. So whatever your hair means to you, it is worth fighting for. It's been decades since anyone has made meaningful advancements in the hair health industry, but a new world of science and research has just changed the way we think about hair and its relationship to our overall health. Nutrafol scientists and researchers worked for years to come up with a formula that multi-targets the various causes, um, improving hair from within. This is not a magic pill. This is a strategy to grow hair from within by nourishing the environment that makes hair happy. So think of it like a plant. You can feed and water it, but if the soil isn't healthy, then it cannot thrive. Uh, Nutrafol is 100% drug free. This is a nutraceutical. It's made of clinically tested medical grade botanical ingredients. So there are no bad side effects and no compromise to overall wellness. In fact, many users report better sleep, digestion, feelings of calm, and healthier skin. It's Need manufactured. All of that. 
I know, right? <laughs> so, like, worst case scenario, you're taking something that's, like, super great for your overall health. <laughs> uh, manufactured in the United States, it is an FDA certified, uh, sorry, ma- it's manufactured in the United States in an FDA certified facility. It does not contain any GMOs, no soy, no eggs, no dairy, no gluten, no peanuts, no shellfish, no tree nuts, no wheat, no yeast, no artificial flavors, or colors love mm-hmm. all of the super above. califragilistic no gmo soy eggs dairy gluten peanuts <laughs> shellfish trees <laughs> it's basically kosher for passover don't quote me on that mm-hmm. um oh so- my god <laughs> uh Nutrafol is available in two distinct formulas designed for men and women or neither or both or anything in between <laughs> to suit your specific metabolic needs. So whatever your hair identifies as, you should respect mm-hmm. that and, you know, mm-hmm. treat your follicles. Mm-hmm. So go to mm-hmm. Nutrafol.com. That's N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com to learn more. And to get your first month's supply with a subscription for only $10, uh, use promo code GALS, G-A-L-S, during checkout. Again, you can get your first month's supply of Nutrafol uh, with a subscription for just $10. So visit Nutrafol.com and enter promo code GALS at checkout. Treat Treat your your follicles. (laughs) Amazing. Uh, In true Amanda fashion, I could not find one case deep enough to satisfy my needs <laughs> so um, <laughs> hi mom so i have a couple Woo. shallow dives <laughs> for you guys uh my first case is out of none other than cape town south africa <gasps> let the countdown to cape town begin Yo. yes uh this took place just over a year ago in january of 2017 when shannon lawrence 36 years old was reported missing by her husband three days after leaving the house to go shopping at the cape at the town center mall in mitchell's plain near cape town do you are you okay. familiar with this mall uh, no, not with them all, but Mitchell's Plain is, um, I th- think maybe used to be a township or is a township outside of Cape Town. Basically, mm-hmm. Cape Town is kind of the opposite of Johannesburg, where the outer rim of it is, the inner center of the city is is wealthier, and then the mm-hmm. outer rim is is a little bit um, more economically disadvantaged. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. But it's the opposite in Johannesburg? Yeah. We oh, won't okay. get into it. That's like a whole another episode. Yeah. Yep. Love it. We'll do another episode a on South African South crimes African just crimes. so Kenyon can <laughs> talk about the disparities in wealth in like city limits of Johannesburg. And the rest of us can get yeah. super fucking trashed. It'll be amazing. <laughs> yeah. I actually am completely on board with this plan. Anyway. Yeah. So she goes she goes missing for a couple days. And Shannon's daughter, I love uh, I, I mean I don't I don't love this, but uh I love all of the uh the things that we can relate to out of this story. Shannon's daughter received a strange text via WhatsApp, which is what we use to communicate. Yep. Um, Great app. Great app. It's such a great app. Free advertising. Um, Demanding 10 million Rand, which is about $850,000 in U.S. doll hairs. So not like, not a tiny (laughs) bit of money by any means. That's a lot. Um, That's more money than I will ever see in my life. Correct. Mm-hmm. Um, so demanding tell me 10 million rand or they'd never see her Shannon alive again. Ugh. So the daughter gets this fucking text. Like, can you even imagine? Mm-hmm. Obviously distraught, the family contacted police. And uh, again, they'd already reported her missing, but they now get this text. They contact police again with this updated information. And uh, the authorities are tracking the mysterious phone because it's 2017. So anything you send on a smartphone, even if it's not your smartphone, has, like, a trail, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. So it leads authorities to addresses in nearby Portland and Eastridge, but Shannon is nowhere to be found. So it takes them a couple places, but it's not a successful hit. Um, The next day, she's spotted at a different mall, the Liberty Mm -hmm. Promenade in Mitchell's Plain. Mm -hmm. So Mitchell's Plain apparently is getting their mall on. It's like the Minnesota of South Africa. No, but everywhere in South Africa (laughs) is a mall. Like you can go to like a fancy restaurant, like a fancy ass restaurant and it will be in a mall and your view is a parking lot. I love it. Great. Yeah. I love it. Cool. Um, so it takes them to this mall or she spotted at this mall and, uh, police are at the time still under the impression that they're negotiating with kidnappers via WhatsApp. And then they see this sighting. They get a report of the sighting of her just like chilling on a phone in this mall. So they're like, "Mm, the fuck's going on here? So they 
are suspicious. And I think they, at this point, really know what's happening here. And they continue to play into the hostage negotiations, quote unquote, uh, with her. And they set a location for them to meet to, like, make the exchange of funds to get Shannon back. Um, Uh Shannon shows up alone to, like, Mm -hmm. collect, I guess, and is instead arrested (laughs) and charged with kidnapping, extortion, and, quote, (laughs) defeating the ends of justice, which I like that charge. She didn't even bring a fake kidnapper. Nope. Nope. (laughs) Defeating Uh, the ends of justice justice. is my favorite part. I know. And uh, her reasoning behind the faked kidnapping, she wanted to see if her family loved her. (gasps) Eye roll emoji. So good. (laughs) So good. Yep. So that's pretty common. And here's another one. A little more close to home. 38-year-old Ohio woman Thelma Williams sparked a Mm. massive police rescue response, as well as putting her family through absolute fucking hell in the fall of 2017. Apparently, early 2017 was a a good... Or sorry, late 2017. 2017. Yeah. Good year for fake abductions. (laughs) Um, Great vintage. (laughs) A friend of Thelma's <laughs> called 911 after seeing a video on Thelma's fake Facebook page of Thelma in an undisclosed location bound, tied to a pole, and pleading for her life. In the video, Ugh. she states that, quote, they have me and are going to kill me today. They. P- yeah, the elusive they. Police took every measure to protect her and recover her, even dispatching helicopters and shutting down highways to ensure her captors couldn't run off with her. Yeah. Police mm-hmm. arrived at Thelma's home and they found her in her own basement, loosely bound to a support beam, clothes torn. Thelma told okay. authorities that a masked man had broken into her house, cut her clothes, and tied her up in the basement. She claimed that the kidnapper took her cell phone, recorded the video, and posted it to Facebook on her account. And she had like her own underwear stuffed in her mouth or something like that, yep. too. Yep. Mm-hmm. No money was demanded in this kidnapping, and the scene was just not making sense. So investigators take a closer look at the posted video. Quote, we can actually see her waiting for it to come on so she can get her serious face on. <gasps> Jesus. Yep, like that awkward <laughs> pause when you first start a video where yeah. you're like, and now action. Here's where I start oh, talking. God, she that's did the that. worst part of Facebook Lives. I know. <gasps> oh, hi. Yep. Oh uh, they God. continue to say, we find her story to be a complete fabrication. In interviews with Thelma, she ended up admitting that she'd staged the entire thing. Uh, quote, after interviewing Williams, there were several inconsistencies with her story. Williams later admitted she fabricated the attack. Thelma's daughter said she was terrified when she saw the video, which I do have a link to. And it's pretty disturbing. Like, other, I mean, yeah. if going into it not knowing it's fake, I would, if my mother pulled shit like that, I'd be so fucking mad. Like, just to scare your family like that. Yeah, I should Um, fucking say so. Yeah. Yeah. The daughter said she was terrified when she saw the video, but doesn't think her mom did it for attention. Quote, if my mom made this up, it's not for attention. It's because she needs help, not because she needs to be behind bars, which, like, totally fair. Get you some talk space, girl. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, But Thelma was charged with a fifth-degree felony for filing a false report, and it was so intense because the police department had exhausted so many financial resources to literally put a helicopter in the air and close down highways. Yeah. Like that is some fucking yeah. major wasteful resources. So yeah. she did end up going to jail. Fuck. Mm-hmm. And I have one more, which is not quite a fake abduction, but it also is a fake abduction. And it, like, it would piss me off if I were a witness to this, but this also cracked me up because it's just like such bad. It's like the road to hell is fucking so paved with good intentions. You guys, this is so quintessential oh. of that oh. phrase. Okay. Oh, so okay. yes, police in Sequim, Washington mm-hmm. investigated a fake child abduction that terrified people at a playground in the small community and is drawing outrage oh. from parents around the country. Oh, great. A clip okay. of the stage kidnapping titled, quote, the child abduction prevention and awareness video was posted <laughs> on YouTube. Catchy. By Twins <laughs> TV. W- T-W-I-N-Z TV, which is a YouTube channel created by two Washington brothers who say they film pranks and stunts. No. The video shows families enjoying a sunny day at the park when a van suddenly pulls up and a masked man jumps out, runs toward a boy sitting on a bench, grabs him, and jumps back into the van. The vehicle then drives <gasps> nope. off with frantic people running after it. Nope. 
Not yep. cool. Mm-mm. When the group yep. later returned to the park to say the stunt was part of, quote, kidnapping awareness, the park goers <laughs> were furious. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Rightfully <laughs> fucking so. Yep. You should fucking say so. Wow. This is outrageous, one woman yelled. How would you feel if that happened to you? Another exclaimed, completely fair. The filmmakers, twins Jason and Jeremy Holden, apologize on the Today Show. Quote, we didn't really think about what we were doing, and we didn't really think about the kids that were, we were endangering. So hold, hold they on. were in Wait, on it. they took a real kid? No, no, no. Like they You're, took a kid I'm about to explain air? this. I'm about to okay. explain this. They were in on it, and they got permission from a family member. It's like their cousin or something mm-hmm. who was the kid that they took. But they were okay. at a park with completely unaware people. With their children playing it. Yep. How long, okay. how much time passed since they, like, between when they took the child and brought him back? A uh, decent amount of time, and we'll get to that, too. Not, like, a ton, but probably a good 45 minutes. Oh, my Shit. God. Yeah. Jesus. A statement posted underneath the video inclu- now includes an apology to the upset onlookers and explains the clip was part of a an effort to educate parents on the fucking Twins TV prank it was YouTube a station. Prank. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Quote, we made this video to help prevent and to show how real an abduction can be. We're sorry to whoever was at the park and had to be a part of it. We needed real reactions and didn't mean to harm anyone. Yeah, you really needed that. Yep. For your YouTube ratings. Oh, yeah. It gets worse. Mark Klass, whose 12-year-old daughter, Polly, was kidnapped and murdered in 1993, (gasps) was not buying their explanation. Ooh. Oh, I'm challenged to find any kind of educational value to the video whatsoever, uh, said Class, uh, who is now a child safety advocate. So, like, actually works in that field now. Isn't just a, yeah. is also a pissed off parent, but also works in that field. God. A mother who witnessed the fake kidnapping with her seven year old daughter at the park says her daughter is still traumatized. Of course she is. Quote: yeah, I've because never. It wasn't. It wasn't like they were. Doing a video of, like, how kidnappers typically lure nope. a child. That it, No, they went up and grabbed a kid who was in on Snatched it and ran and away. Ran. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That yeah. could happen to any child anywhere. Of mm-hmm. course they're there's traumatized. Nothing, there's nothing to educate anyone to prevent that. You're just in shock witnessing no. it happen. The, and this mom, Tiffany Bar- Barnett, said, I've never ran so fast in my adult life. I was absolutely bawling, and I could not stop shaking. My entire body was shaking. I was so scared for that little boy and what might happen to him. My daughter is still scared. She keeps asking, what if they take me? Her <gasps> oh, seven-year-old geez. daughter now has, like, PTSD because of these fuckwads. These, uh. Ugh. Anyway. Uh, Sequim City attorney Craig Ritchie said the people behind the video did call the police a few minutes earlier about their intentions, but there was no chance to respond. A few Quote, minutes earlier. Yeah. Oh my We're God. We're taking a Just look to at- cover their fucking bases. Well, Exactly. And uh, the attorney says, we're taking a look at whether or not there is a crime. You just really can't anticipate all the ways people can be stupid, which I love that. Um, I hope he's referring to the kidnappers, quote unquote, not like. Yeah. Yeah. Thousand percent. Yeah. He's saying that these guys are fucking idiots. And like he there isn't even a clear cut crime to apply to this because it's a new version of how idiotic. You can be. Wow. Okay. Uh, I just checked because my mom used to live uh, on the Olympic Peninsula. Yeah. And I was wondering if sequim was mm-hmm. the same, but it's it's pronounced squim. Oh, well. Weird. It's not yeah, spelled it, that way. No, it's spelled like sequin with an M. Dermal. But it is. It's like, <laughs> it's really it's really close to where my mom lived on the Olympic Peninsula. I'm just going to call it semen instead. <clears throat> okay. Semen. Yep. Semen yeah. Washington. <laughs> uh... So, uh, this attorney noted that some people in the park were terrified. They called 911. Uh, the town is home to several retirees. So any elderly and frail onlookers who thought they were witnessing harm being done to a child could have suffered a heart attack. Easily. Mm -hmm. Which didn't happen, but it's like, this guy is an attorney, so he's gonna, you know, play it up a little bit. Um, but these things, they can endanger people for a multitude of of reasons. Um, yeah. Jeremy and Jason Holden are listed as the creators of Twins TV. Quote, the boy is my nephew, and yes, the mom gave permission to use him in the video, which makes me wonder how much she even knew they were There's no way. Yeah, using him for. Enough. Congrats. Yeah. Yeah. You've covered yep. your bases, you fucking prick. Yep. 
The boy is, they continued saying the boy is four years old and was fully aware what was going on and what we were he's going four. to do with him. He's four? He, he's four, yep. Oh my God, I was picturing like a 12-year-old. He's no, fucking he's four. four? But, but he's fully aware of what's going on. Uh, he was not harmed in any way. He was actually smiling the whole time. These are the biggest fuckboys of all time. I, I just hate them. Yeah, exactly. It should be called Fuckboys TV with yep. a Z. Ish, fuck twins. Uh, yep. <laughs> uh, Seaman Police Chief Bill Dickinson told the Peninsula Daily News that, quote, at least two people were under investigation, so these guys. The chief also said these kinds of stunts and pranks are dangerous and the twins risk getting shot from responding police or even the public who may be armed. Like, we're in the United yeah. States. What are you doing? Yeah. Uh, based on what they're seeing, if they believe a serious crime is taking place, they would be justified. In you know, if they had been shot, they... The the shooter likely would not have seen any legal repercussions from that Unless situation. Unless they were of color, and right. then they would have been imprisoned right. forever. We're assuming right. in a system that makes sense, whoever right. would have shot them to defend a child has right. a case and would likely not see any jail time. But can you imagine if it had escalated to something like that, and not only yeah. does... Does your dumbass get shot, potentially killed, but at least injured? But then the person who shot you now has to live with the fact that they fucking shot someone and it yeah. was for fucking nothing. Like, these guys are the worst. I um, would stand by the shooter a thousand percent if somebody they, pulled that. The boy, the guys actually got pulled over after, like, the van got pulled over by a police officer because so many people called 911. And the officer who pulled over the twins in the video didn't know that the kidnapping stunt was a hoax and said, mm -hmm. honestly, quote, I was fully ready to kill whoever was in that front seat of the van. Oh, my yeah, God. They because really, he's thinking. They really could have died. And they were putting that four-year-old in so much danger, yep. too. So crazy. Jesus so yeah, Christ, that's horrible. there is a link to the video on uh, the Today Show dot com website that we could stick on the blog if you're interested in seeing it. But I don't even want to see it. That's I mean, sickening. it's fucking really dumb. Yeah, it's so fucking dumb. But anyway, those are my cases. Great. Good wow. job. Yeah. Isn't that All crazy? Right. That well, there are a lot video. of fucking crazies out there trying to do Stupid fake idiots. abductions for publicity or YouTube hits, ransom or mm -hmm. attention. Or Seeking Making loyalty. sure their families care about them. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Want to make sure reasons. you love me. Whew. Oh my god. All right. All right. Well, people that show their love in a more productive way by donating <laughs> to Wine and Crime podcast. Yes. <laughs> we'll never question um, your loyalty. Never. Yeah. <laughs> uh, number one, our fan pick selector mm -hmm. this week. Cassandra Netherton. Yes. Woo! Thank you for this Thank amazing you. topic. This was so fun. Seriously, this guys, a good topic. donate at the $25 a month level because the fan picks are some of our absolute favorite ones to do. It's so fun. Yeah, y'all are way more creative than we yeah. are. They're mm -hmm. like super weird. They're things yeah. that we never mm -hmm. would have thought of, and we love it. Love it, love mm -hmm. it, love it. Take it away, someone, not me. All right, Can't do Matilda it. McNutt. Mathilde mm -hmm. McNutt. Love mm -hmm. that whole name. She, I'm busting a McNutt. Oh, she has increased donation. her pledge from $2 to $5 a month, so bless you. Mm. Uh, Angela Strickland, you're also giving five bucks a month. Thank you so much. You're so generous. Yo. You are strictly amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're strictly the best. Um. <laughs> That's not um, even. The best. <laughs> Shout out to Anita Marie. I need a more of you, Anita Marie. Oh. <laughs> and I also need more of Morgan Raphael at five dollars. Mo a Morgan, month. mo problems. Am I right? Mo <laughs> Morgan, mo five dollar month pledges. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> And thank you, Sydney DeAndrea, for your $5 a month donation and your shared love of Stassi with Lucy. Yes! <laughs> I have the weirdest obsession with Stassi. I love her. I hope she's Stassi is right like now. Lucy's okay. Kristen Stewart. <laughs> well, not in a I sexual have... way. We just have a lot of uh, like emotional uh, connections. Things in common. <laughs> yeah. yeah, though I watched a recent episode of Vanderpump Rules and she describes how she wants to kill like her boyfriend. Everyone. Oh, and yeah. it's very thorough. It's over like a two year it's like a two year plan. It's so good. Amazing. I love her. Did it did it track with all of your recurring dreams? 
about yeah. murder. You guys, I have had a series of very violent dreams lately, which I won't <laughs> share now because I feel like it could get me like but on a list. Yeah. But um it's You don't bad. want any of this to be used against you when you do commit one of these crimes. Well, Mm-hmm. The so. higher my mm-hmm. stress and anxiety gets, the more violent my dreams get. So cool. that like affects yeah. my day to day. Um, I am hoping that some therapy will help. <laughs> I'm gonna make you have your own room at CrimeCon. Amanda and I will share. I would yeah. love my own room, honestly. Can Scott sleep? No one gets too? their own room. We have like ten people Damn staying it. with us. <laughs> okay, I'll pay for my own room. Uh, Shout out to Chrissy G. <laughs> you are an OG, Chrissy. Thank you for your $5 a month. Yes. And thank you, Robin Merrill Payne, for your $5 a month. It is, you don't give us pain. You give us <laughs> good, you give us money. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> big thanks to Sophie Schroeder. Schroeder? Schroeder. Schroeder. Similar name to Stassi Schroeder, so, you know. Uh, Sophie says, if you live in Minnesota, you probably heard of Schroeder Milk. Think of your school milk in middle and high school. Was it Schroeder or Schroeder, though? I always said Schroeder. Thank you, Sophie, for all of your family's calcium throughout Mm -hmm. our middle-aged years. Yep. Yep. And we are going to milk your generosity for all its worth. Oh, I like that. <laughs> nice. That I is. like that. that. <laughs> I do like that. <laughs> also, uh, that one was below the belt, but thank you to Lindsay Lowe. Below Ooh, the T. Oh, Han. <laughs> oh, Lindsay Lowe. Lindsay your generosity Lowe and- is high. I love these two names next to each other because they're both like celebra- celebrities. So we've got Lindsay Lowe. And Katie Pretty, it's like Lindsay Lohan <laughs> yeah. and Katie Perry, but slightly different, <laughs> but they just are, as Katie wonderful. Pretty. They are obviously the actual celebrities, but with their like nom de plumes. Knew mm-hmm. it. Their hotel so check-in no names. Love Katie it. Pretty, you're pretty awesome. You yes. Are. As is Morgan Goebel. Woo. You go, Go girl. global with Goebel. Go global. <laughs> At $10 a month, also, you will be getting a fucking patriarchy flexible wine glass uh-huh. mm-hmm. <laughs> as will lb todd and, and it um, will LB be darned. soon so lb generous. darned <laughs> and riley marino you're gonna get a wine glass arino in the <laughs> mail arino pretty soon arino <laughs> <laughs> i'm wow. drunk <laughs> uh judy langvin You'll You're be like a, soon. You'll be like able to a, fill your glass with vin, vino, lagavulin, langavin, <laughs> lots of vin. <laughs> Jesus. Um, <laughs> also, a shout out to someone. I don't think this is their given name, but I, I could be is. wrong. Could be but wrong. But the name We've that I have weirder. is quote Mommy loves Brooke Madeline. <laughs> oh, so my either, given name. Brooke Madeline, you have a mom who really loves you, or somebody has some weird parents and named their child Mommy Loves Brooke Madeline. That's We've heard incredible. weirder, though, if that comforts oh, yeah. you yep. at all. Yeah, also, we love you. Strap yourself in, don't use wire hangers. Mm-hmm. Mommy Jerry's. Uh, trash Queen! <laughs> this is where we're at now. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm cross-eyed. Uh, Sky increased their pledge from five dollars to fifteen dollars a month so that they could get yes. their hands on some sweet, sweet trash sweet from any garbage. number of our homes. Now that we're accumulating all of our trash to give to Lucy to send out, it's gonna be so amazing. Thank I just you. want to. I just want to explain this for any new listeners. Basically, we did not have a fifteen dollar a month tier, but then nope. a brilliant listener just decided to create one for yep. us, um, and so I think we wanted. I made a joke at some point yep. during the fifteen dollar a month, or when we transitioned from ten to fifteen, because there's there was nothing between ten and twenty five. Yeah, that random yeah. listener gave at fifteen, and we were giving them a shout out. We were like, "What can we do between ten and 15? I'll and send you, you some dusty like, trash from my yeah. house. <laughs> and my old I guess Furby. I'll get throw in some trash and, and then Kenyon and I wasted out of our minds we're like no absolutely yes this is happening and Kenyon's like already <laughs> updating Patreon so no one can back out of <laughs> it took the fuck <laughs> off and now I'm living in a completely empty house so yeah it's great for ruining me so great <laughs> <laughs> your 
unmarrying your life. It's so great. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't bring you joy, but it brings our <laughs> listeners joy. Yeah. Woo. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> is it my turn? No. Yes, it is. Uh, no. no. Well, Lucy's whatever. Turn. Nicole Chaffee. Yes. I don't even know. You are <laughs> not chaffing my thighs. Ass. <laughs> <laughs> With your $15 a month pledge. (laughs) Thank you so much. Sorry about that. Everything. I'm I'm, I'm sorry for everything. I regret everything. everything. (laughs) Um, Shout out to Sierra Dupuis. Mm, Blanche Um, Dubois. (laughs) (laughs) I have loved you ever since you began donating, and that Mm -hmm. is a joke for everyone who speaks French. Dupuis. (laughs) (laughs) You're so... Such a bitch. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks. Moving on. $25 a month. We have a bunch of new $25 oh a month, Oh, my God, folks. peeps. God bless. So, quick reminder, if you are donating at the $25 a month level, you get to pick a case and or crime and or topic wine. for an entire episode or wine or whatever you want to do. <laughs> you get to tell us what the fuck to do. Yeah. Including Jen take the lead. Jen Brown, you're making my pants brown with how excited I am over this donation. <laughs> oh, gross. I'm going to go make some hot brown once we hang up for this call. Oh, <laughs> my God. All right. <laughs> One glass of hot brown. Hold the blood. Whew. Okay. <laughs> it's getting what? real personal. Let's move on to Mariah White. You are absolutely Ooh. white for consent. Uh, I meant to rhyme that with right. <laughs> You're absolutely what? right. What? <laughs> For donating. $25 a month to us. <laughs> Can't we assume that so you are, in this. fact, white, but it rhymes with white. So that's what I'm going with. Sorry. I but... know. <laughs> Got a lot of wine, guys. Drunk special thanks is my favorite part of the entire episode. Oh. Just fast forward through every episode and only listen to special thanks. Some are drunker and less appropriate than others. Yep. All right, uh, shout out to Serena Porter. Um, we have had a lot of port or uh-huh. other wine, and <laughs> so I can't think of anything. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, yeah, nailed it. Lexi McClellan, you're the Ian McClellan to my, the guy who's friends with Ian McClellan. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> who's that actor from fucking Star Trek? I don't even know who Ian McClellan is. Oh, is he the wrinkly eyed? The wrinkly eyed guy who is not Kenyon's fiance. No, he is Gandalf the Grey. He's old. Yeah, Yeah, super wrinkly eyes. Oh my god. Yes. Christy McMahon. Oh, McMahon, you are generous with your twenty (laughs) dollar once off donation. So a reminder for all of you who don't feel like taking the plunge to pledge monthly. You As can. I know from my ex-boyfriends, commitment can be hard. <laughs> commitment can be an obstacle, mm-hmm. even when it is to someone or something that you love mm-hmm. dearly. So maybe but if you, you want to step up and be a McMahon, you can mm-hmm. still donate. Why don't you donate consistently for four years and then end your donation and tell your donation that you didn't love it for half of those four years? And that it was all the fault of the organization you were donating to. <laughs> forcing that said organization to buy a rabbit and name it Albus Dumbledore. Yeah, and I mean, then I don't you can start soul. donating to another organization really I quickly. Can't. Also, <laughs> probably an organization that has ties to the first organization. Yeah. A loosely held organization. <laughs> Not that we're I judging hate everything. the looseness. <laughs> Whose turn is it? It's Kenyon's turn. <laughs> is it mine? Yeah. <laughs> Tracy Le Capitaine. Oh. Tracy. You are le capitaine of my heart. You and are. Thank you for the $25 once off for CrimeCon, which starts tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Also, big shout out to Tracy for yep. being just the most beautiful Glamazon yep. in the world. We love yep. you. We love seeing you at all of the Minneapolis yep. events. I'm sorry. I'm we so excited. We are to so your excited wife. to see you guys at our live show on Sunday. I am assuming that you're going to be there. Mm, yeah. Get a babysitter for Vinny. We're yep. partying. I think this episode airs after the live show. Doesn't so it matter. Was great seeing you. The thought you. is there. We'll see you in Sorry a week, about it. which will have been a week ago by the time this airs. It's fine. Mm-hmm. All right, one more. Last but not least, Ken Persons. 
Oh. Wow, Ken Persons, you are going to give libations to many persons with your $50 once off. Uh, Ken says, probably won't make it to CrimeCon, but absolutely wanted to buy you guys around. Can't love your show your show more. Y'all rock. We can't love you more, Ken what? Persons. Yeah. We can get around round of like. You go, Ken Persons. You anything. go, Ken Coco. <laughs> We can get a round um, of Grey Goose Red Bulls with 50 bucks. Yeah, we're getting, we're getting mozzarella sticks on Lauren Miller. We're getting yes. Grey Goose mm-hmm. Red Bulls on Ken Persons. We're going <laughs> to do all, we're going to do it right. It's happening. Yeah. Oh and my some God. sort all of right. weird like foam core souvenir on somebody else's one off donation. And a giant check. <laughs> yes, a novelty check. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, special thanks to our sponsor, Talkspace. If you have made it through all of these special thanks, then you need Talkspace. You have to get 30 um, bucks off that month. For $30 off your first month, go to Talkspace.com forward slash gals. We're sorry you. and you're welcome. <laughs> sorry <laughs> and you're welcome. <laughs> all oh right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Wine and Crime. Our cover art is by Kala Yip. Music by Phil Young and Corey Wendell. Check out our website and blog at wineandcrimepodcast.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at wineandcrimepod. If you have wine recommendations or creepy true crime stories to share, email us at wineandcrimepodcast at gmail.com. Episodes are available on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, basically wherever you get your podcasts. More importantly, if you like the show, please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. It really is the best way to spread the word. We are a totally independent show, so if you'd like to support us and get a shout out on air, visit our Patreon page to keep this podcast and the wine flowing. Cheers! Walk Among Us is an award-winning true crime podcast. From the sinister and surreal to the brutal and bizarre, join us every other week to hear more on the UK's most notorious and obscure crimes. Featuring well-known cases like the life and crimes of the UK's most violent inmate Charles Bronson, to the sad tale of the Gibbons twins whose string of petty crimes would lead them to be trapped in Broadmoor for 11 years before their eventual release ended in tragedy. We also cover lesser-known cases like the woman who murdered a husband with an ornamental frog and kept him mummified in her shed for 18 years, or the teenager that used his elaborate online fantasy life to plot his own murder. Listen and subscribe to They Walk Among Us through Acast, Apple Podcasts or your favourite podcast provider. (laughs) 